Listen to God putting Satan, our enemy, in his place. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, you shall bruise his heel. And so it is, we celebrate Christmas in July with an Old Testament reading. Not normally used in the Christmas story, but more likely you will hear that upon Palm Sunday. For Christmas, I think when we kind of picture it in our mind, uh, a little bit prior to, uh, we picture the trip to Bethlehem, and we think of Mary on a donkey being led along, right? After the birth of Jesus, we may think about their escape to Egypt, and maybe we picture Jesus and Mary on a donkey going to Egypt. That's not in Scripture, though. This is in scripture, the triumphant entry on a donkey on the Sunday prior to the resurrection of Jesus. The one we always celebrate, the entry of the Messiah King into Jerusalem. So today, I want to celebrate the other triumphal entries of Jesus. We begin with the triumphal entry of Jesus at his birth. That's the day that I call the day God showed up in person. Who knew that the king had arrived that day? Well, Mary sure knew. Ouch, moms, right? She had given birth. Joseph knew. He saw the very moment of that birth. The shepherds knew. The angels came and a light shone round about them. A little later, Simeon knew, and he confesses, My eyes have seen your salvation. Anna, immediately right after that, she knew, and coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were awaiting for redemption. The Magi knew. They say, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? It's already a done deal by then. The king of the Jews has been born. And even Herod knew. Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Later on, there is the triumphal entry of Jesus into the temple. He's 12 years old. This is how it's recorded. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. All them, they all knew. What about the triumphal entry of Jesus into his very own baptism? His father says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. The baptizer knew he saw the dove descend, the Holy Spirit descend. He heard the voice of God the Father, and he is personally baptizing the very Son of God. And then there's a triumphal entry of Jesus into the wilderness immediately right after his baptism. Satan knows, this is what Jesus tells him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus sends Satan packing at that point. What about the triumphal entry on the Mount of Transfiguration? Moses and Elijah knew they've come back from the dead. Now Peter, James, and John know, as they say, they saw the glory and the two men who stood with them. Back to the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Oh boy, did all of those people know for sure who it was that was riding on the donkey coming to them because they had heard it had been written 400 years earlier by Zechariah because he says it would. And this is what they say. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So who are all these people who are blind up there, got their palm branches, throwing their cloaks down on the ground? This is what God's word says. 
the crowd that had been with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead and continued to bear witness. All these people knew of Jesus. What about Jesus' triumphal entry into death? Well, we know because Jesus drug all of our sins with him to the cross and then he drug them to the tomb. How about the triumphal entry of Jesus and his resurrection from the dead? We know that too. Because Jesus left our sins forgiven in that tomb. One more triumphal entry. When he goes back into heaven. The ascension of Jesus, right? They watch him ascend back into heaven. All the disciples knew. You know, we talked about all these triumphal entries of Jesus, the Son of God. There was one other who was witness to each and every one of these triumphal entries. Satan knew. At every point, he knew of each and every one of these triumphal entries. Listen to this recorded from... Revelation. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. Brought the manger back out. Started thinking about it, and I started thinking about this passage from Revelation. Typically, at Christmas, you have Mary and Joseph, right? Maybe you got the wise men in the back, and you got the shepherds and all that. But let's just say, for this point in time, at the very moment of birth, we have Mary and Joseph. But we have Satan right there. And this is the picture I get in my mind. I see Mary on the straw giving birth to Jesus. I see Joseph trying to comfort her. And then... I see Satan at the very base of it, waiting for the birth. To devour the child. <laughs> but this is what he doesn't know. Satan doesn't know who Mary is giving birth to. Don't give credit to Satan for knowing that in advance. He does not know. All of a sudden, he sees and knows it is the Son of God. Yeah. He sees the very Son of God. Now, what I've just talked about is not typically what we're going to do on Christmas, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, right? But I think it's very important for us to know this from Revelation, that that is what Satan is doing, and that is what he is waiting for. Jesus is the one who was promised by God in the garden. I will put enmity between you and the woman, her seed and your seed. Imagine Satan's face. And then recorded in Revelation, this comes right after that. She gave birth to a male child, one who would rule the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and his throne. The triumph of God in Jesus Christ. From his birth to, we just recorded, his ascension. Jesus triumphs. But God's not done. This follows in Revelation. Now war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon as the angels fought back. But he was defeated. Satan and his minions at that point of the ascension are crushed. The purpose of recording 
this war in heaven. The church is now living in the story of Christ's triumph over Satan. You and I, the church, we're living in that right now. The very thing when Christ crushes Satan. One more triumph. What about Jesus' triumphant return? This is when it gets really good. Listen to this. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Whether at that point in time when Jesus comes again, you are remaining on this earth or not, you are always alive in Jesus Christ. Always alive in Jesus Christ. So for us, this means... More than Jesus as being our Savior. Jesus is our God. Listen to this prophecy. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. The Lord, taking our right hand, is absolutely astonished. The Lord taking your hand is the reason why you and I need to rejoice today, tomorrow, and into eternity. All this God made possible for you because God showed up in person, in the person of Jesus Christ. From the birth, she will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. This is why we celebrate Christmas in July. Hmm. What would you say to celebrating the triumphs of Jesus every month? Every day. And all God's people shout, Amen. Amen.